Hey you guys, it's Rachel here with Sense of Tempo Connie Corso. So um, I wanted to talk to you guys about um, something that I think is very important and, um, and um, was really highlighted by a recent story that I read. Um, so there was a golden retriever that um, was taken to the, his vet to be euthanized. His owners took him to the vet to be euthanized. And <clears throat> I'm guessing that the reason why was because the dog was showing extreme signs of hip dysplasia. Basically, the dog couldn't get up and couldn't move. And that's because the dog was severely overweight. Um, and so luckily, the vet knew better and took the dog to, um, had, a, had a rescue uh, step in and they uh, got the dog to a foster. And that person, over the course of a year, was able to get that dog um, to lose um, literally 100 pounds. So the dog went from not being able to walk um, to being able to walk and, and act like a normal dog. And his state of mind was greatly increased by that. He was much happier and um, <clears throat> overall, you know, in entirety was a, was, a, was a better dog, healthier dog, both mentally and physically. And, um, and so, and it, and it really got me because um, when I was growing up, my parents had a Rottweiler um, named Cowboy. And um, when I was growing up, um, I remember that he had to be euthanized because he had hip dysplasia. And I never thought anything of it. Um, I knew that big dogs could get that. It was what everyone said. Oh, well, big dogs can have hip dysplasia. And so, um, so I just accepted it. And um, hold on one sec. Hey, Gina, over here. Scout, over here. Don't be trying to take off now. Come on. Um, come on. Good boy. That's a good boy. Good girl, Gina. Good girl. Yeah, good girl. Good boy, Scout. Yes, you're a good boy. Yes, you are. I'm giving him some love. Yes, you are. You're a good boy. So, um, anyway, so it wasn't until after I was an adult, after I had um, been breeding for a while, that I looked back on pictures of Cowboy and I realized how overweight he was and how that most likely had been the reason that we had to euthanize our dog. Because, you know, we thought his hips had just gone bad. And nobody realized that him being overweight would would have such a catastrophic effect on him. I don't think that my parents would have euthanized him had they known they could have just, you know, put him on a diet. Um, but, you know, I think that I think that their case was a very extreme case, right? That dog was, um, our dog was overweight, but he was nowhere near as big as that dog was. Um, now, he was still probably a good 30 pounds overweight. I'm not going to lie. That's a lot for a dog. Um, but it wasn't 100 pounds overweight. And so, you know, I just... You know, I I read that and then later on, um, it kind of sickened me or whatever, but it was like, you know, it sucks, but I'm really glad to hear that it worked out. And then I'm on this um, forum, this Facebook group, um, Connie Corso Love, I think it's called. And unfortunately, that group is full of a lot of, um, of owners that mean well, but oftentimes are some of the people that... Um, are not really ones for the breed, really for any dog. Um, a lot of them have kind of like some emotional issues and they're seeking that um, fulfillment from the dogs. And so they will allow things because they can't discipline the dogs because the dog is their friend. You know, They're too emotionally connected to the dog to actually do anything. And so this one lady had posted this video of her dog um, wiggling, like the dog was walking and the butt and the butt wiggled because the, the dog was pretty overweight. And everyone was like, oh, haha, ha, it's so awesome, you know, and somebody even put like, you know, um, chunky booty, you know, something like that, like it's supposed to be cute. And the thing is, it's, it's anything but cute. Um, and I, and I, you see it with cats too, you know, fat cats, and it's really annoying that people will, you know, once again, will damage a dog's health just for something cute, right? I've talked about it before with the ears. I've talked about it before with the, with the smushed in face. There's a lot of deformities that we will breed into dogs because we think they're cute. Scout, get down. No. And, um, and so, you know, it's just like, that's another version of it. You know, um, just because you think that a fat dog is cute or a fat cat is cute, doesn't make it right. Um, it makes, it makes you, you know, uh, the kind of person that cares more about your visual aesthetics than you do about the health of an animal, which really isn't cool. Um, 
And so it just, it just really frustrated me. I do think that it's normalizing animal abuse. Uh, if, if a person was to beat a dog to the point that it couldn't walk anymore, we obviously wouldn't like that. Most people would agree that that's not okay. But for some reason, whenever somebody overfeeds a dog to the point that it can't walk anymore and, and gets hip dysplasia and has to be put down, people don't make that same connection. You know, they don't recognize that it's the human's fault. And it is. Um, you are, you know, you are shortening the lifespan and the quality of life of your animal by overfeeding it like that. And it's not cute. It's not a little chunky booty. Um, you shouldn't be doing it. And so for me, um, it was just really irritating, especially seeing that article and knowing what I know. And unfortunately, you know, you can't get on a group like that and say, hey, you know, um, your dog is overweight, you should really get it in check because Lord forbid you say something negative on a Facebook group, you know, Lord forbid you hurt someone's feelings, you know, that's not okay. Um, you, you have to protect everyone's feelings. And so the dog has to suffer because Lord forbid somebody hurt the human's feelings. And it, that really irritates me. Um, I don't understand it. And I feel as though it normalizes and enables animal abuse. And I blame the admins of those groups specifically for not doing something about it. If, if you're not going to allow people to speak up for the dog's welfare, then at least don't allow it. You know what I mean? Like at least, you know, like delete the post or something because you sure as heck wouldn't be allowing somebody to openly abuse dogs on your group. And yet, you know, letting that incognito abuse go on is just as bad. You know, letting people laugh and talk about their um, overweight dogs is, is, is not okay. And it is normalizing abuse. The other area of concern for me, and it also stems in those groups, is people that will get up there and will post um, pictures or videos of their dogs behaving poorly and then laugh about it. Like this lady, um, actually, <laughs> I couldn't believe this. This lady is literally trying to get her mailman fired because he walked by her bay window and her corso jumped up against the glass and um, actually broke the glass and cut its nose. It was bleeding. And they were griping and griping about the mailman. All these people were griping about the mailman. How dare he walk by her bay window? That's not the way he normally walks. How dare he? I'm filing a complaint. Blah, blah, blah. And I literally felt like my head was spinning. I was like, what universe am I in right now? Where, where have I stumbled upon that somehow it's the mailman's fault that your dog is so out of control that it can't allow somebody to walk past a window without literally trying to go through the window? And my response to her was, well, what happens if a child, like what if a kid was playing ball and then the, then the, the ball, um, you know, uh, goes on their side of the lawn and they have to go get it, you know, or anything. There's, there's a number of things. People go, there's door to door salesmen, people putting little things in your, you know, doors, whatever it is. There's always going to be situations like that. And your dog needs to be able to be prepared for that. And, and there were people they got really emotional that I said that and very, very um, miss know-it-all, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it's like I'm a know-it-all for telling you that you need to control your dog so that it doesn't try to hurt itself or someone else trying to go through a glass window because of someone that's not a threat. And they're like, well, it's a protection breed and blah, blah, blah. Let me be very clear with you. If your dog isn't attacking somebody who's trying to hurt you or someone else, you don't have an attack dog. Or pardon me, you don't have a protection dog. You have an attack dog. Okay, that's what you have. You have an unstable, aggressive animal that is a liability to you and anyone around you and most likely will end up with that animal being euthanized and you with a pretty hefty lawsuit. A protection dog is a dog that protects you. If it's not protecting you from a threat, then it's not protecting. That's not what it's doing. It's being a bully. If a person walks up and punches you in the face for no reason, is it protecting you? Or if you went and you were trying to start something with them and then they punch you in the face, is that protection? Because I'm pretty sure that it's the latter. You know, if, if somebody is trying to hurt you or your family, your dog has every single right to protect you. But if somebody is walking by your front, front lawn and your dog tries to go through the glass, you have an unstable dog and you need to either train that dog or send it to someone who can. 
okay? You don't get to excuse that behavior because your dog is a protection breed. I cannot stand people who sit there and excuse their dog's negative behavior by saying, oh, well, it's just, it's just a protection dog. Or people who, you know, have, um, you know, it, it happens with all kinds of breeds. Like you'll have um, like herding dogs at a dog park and they'll run around, you know, just like jumping at everybody and, and poking their nose to everybody and mounting and really trying to control the whole situation. And that is a protect or pardon me, a herding dog that's out of control. You know, it, that's, that's not necessary. Just because your dog has a breed trait and it's exhibiting that breed trait doesn't mean that it's excused for doing so if the situation doesn't call for it. And that is a lack of personal responsibility. Okay. It is to, to sit there. I could sit there and say, you know what? I'm Maltese. And um, Maltese people, according to my mother, have tempers. In fact, in our family, whenever one of us gets an attitude, we call it the Faruja temper. So it would be like me going around, causing problems. Maybe I get pulled over. Maybe a cop comes over and messes with me and I get an attitude with him. And it's like, no, it's fine. I'm Maltese. I have an attitude. I'm allowed to have an attitude. It's my breed trait. No, it doesn't. It, it is just and it is just something for you to be aware of and you know, okay, well, you know what? Maybe I have a hair trigger attitude and I'm going to have to watch myself and I'm going to have to work harder on my behavior so that I don't act like a jerk, you know? And that's what you have to do with these dogs. You know they're a protection breed, so you're going to have to do extra work to make sure that dog is socialized and knows how to behave itself uh, in society and that means not trying to jump through windows at people that are not doing anything wrong And these people literally wanted to write this guy up. I'm pretty sure they did I'm pretty sure that that poor mailman who's out there in the hot Sun Working walking around trying to do his job trying to pay his bills But he's got these people in their house filing complaints against them because they would rather get him in trouble than actually have to train their dog it is disgusting and the people on the groups will 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 allow it they excuse it they think it's okay and the admin will get mad at you if you say anything and it is the worst thing for our breed it is absolutely the worst thing for our breed you do not allow these dogs to behave that way unless you want to get on a breed ban because these dogs are so in the news and everyone knows them as these horrible attack dogs people like that ruin the reputation of the entire breed when you have a Corso, uh, it is a huge responsibility. It, same thing as uh, when you have a pit bull. It's one of the reasons that I'm tough on people and I'm tough on, on, on my videos when I'm talking about pit bulls because that is a breed that has been destroyed by irresponsible people that didn't care enough to train their dogs. And so their dogs did silly things, bad things, got in the news and ruined the reputation for the breed to the point that everybody else whose dogs were good still had to suffer. And they're still trying to repair that breed's reputation. And if you want that to happen to our breed, keep it up. Keep not training your dogs. Keep making excuses for their negative behavior because that's what will do it. All right? It is not okay. Having a protection breed does not excuse your dog being a jerk. And, um, and shame on anyone who, who allows it or who protects people who do that. You should call them out. And when you see people with overweight dogs talking about how cute it is and blah, 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 call them out too. All right. If people start realizing that they're going to get in trouble for that kind of stuff, that society frowns on it, they will stop doing it. The same reason why most people will, will now uh, buy from a shelter because Lord forbid you tell somebody you bought from a breeder because societal standards will shame you, you know. So if public shaming works and so, you know, I'm telling you for the health of the dogs, when you see people keeping their dogs overweight, say something say something. You don't have to be a jerk about it. Be nice about it. Be polite about it. But let them know what they're doing is wrong. Post links to scientific research studies that indicate what a healthy weight is and the, and the hazards of having your dog overweight. And if you see people excusing their dog's negative behavior and, and, and bad training or lack of training on a breed trait, call them out too and let them know just because you have a protection breed doesn't mean your dog gets to be a psycho. So um, that's what I have to say about that. There's a huge issue with personal responsibility in our breed. Um, a lot of people, you know, treating dogs like children, and it's not okay. And um, and it's very frustrating to me as a, as a as a breeder of these dogs to see that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, so that's all I got to say about that. Sorry, I had to delete the other video, but there was no audio. I tried um, to use a new mic, it didn't work. So unfortunately, um, I had to delete it and do it again. And it took me. A little bit to get over my um, 
annoyance at the fact that it did uh, not record and then yesterday we had no internet at all um, they're working on it so yeah so that kind of sucked but anyway I just wanted to um, sorry I almost hiccuped um, I just want to make sure that we cover that and get it out there um, it is animal abuse stop normalizing animal abuse stop normalizing um, bad behavior I mean we should be ashamed of ourselves there, uh, you guys need to understand that in places like Germany you can literally take your dogs anywhere they don't have the issues that we have with these bad dogs not behaving themselves we are an embarrassment and I really wish that people would get that through their heads Americans are sometimes extremely foolish people and very childlike and we need to cut it out and we need to get it together learn how to control your dogs again all right stop treating them like living stuffed animals and do the work necessary to have them be civilized members of society or don't have one period don't have one go buy a stuffed animal all right um, anyway that's enough of a rant today and um, I'll talk at y'all later bye